When God call us to leave everything behind, to leave what we had just built, to leave what was familiar and dear to us. We didn't know what to expect, but God had a plan. The journey wasn't easy. There were many difficulties and many hardship, but God had a plan. What God has done these 40 years has far exceed our expectation. Glory to God. The Lord has brought us a mighty long way. I said the Lord has brought us a mighty long way. And he who's brought us this far will be taking us far. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. God has blessed us. It was not by might nor our power, but by the Spirit of God. God has a plan. We are grateful for what God has done. We are faithful to what God is doing, and we are hopeful for what God is going to do in the beyond, because God has a perfect plan. We feel so humble and so thankful for all that God has done in these 40 years. We are amazed. It is like the psalmist says, it is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. We give him all the glory and the praise. It's the Lord's doing and we're so grateful. Well, I didn't know that, I didn't know that I was gonna be here to see 40 years of ministry here in Canada because the enemy was out to take my life a couple of times, but thank God for his faithfulness and his goodness. God is indeed mighty and great. You know, I want to give the Lord praise. Like the Apostle Paul said, he has enabled me and counted me faithful to, uh, to call me into this ministry. I never imagined that I would have been involved in the ministry when I was a young child. Didn't know Jesus Christ as my savior. And when he brought me into salvation from heathenism, that was the most wonderful experience in my life. And now that I'm involved in ministry, I, he can use me to impact others all around the world. It was a very difficult decision because I was already involved in evangelism for 12 years. I had preached in 56 crusades around the whole country, taught the, in the main Bible school for a number of years. And now I, I had pioneered this church from 1968 for the last 14 years. Back in 1968, my pastor and I, Alan Hendricks, and some other brethren came to this village of Lagrange, and we had a crusade out on the road, and lots of people got saved. And that's where this church was birthed. We baptized 92 people after that crusade, and Lagrange Agape Assembly of God Church got started. I spent 14 years of my life here, and during those years, we kept services at a couple different locations. And during the latter part of the, the 70s, we start looking for a place. And by the middle of the 70s, we were able to purchase 
this property for $9,000. And we built this building, completed it in 78. And it was then that I started to feel in my heart that God was telling me that my job was over. I was telling my wife that I don't understand it, I can't explain it, but somehow God is bringing Toronto to my attention. And she and I prayed about it, we talked about it, and God began to lead us. And I pastored this church for 14 years until 1982 when we migrated to Toronto. This was a significant part of the vision for my wife and I. This is a place that has great um, meaning for me. My early years of ministry was here. All of the foundational things that I learned about ministry, I learned it right here. Um, I came as a young man and it was either sink or swim, uh, bruise or bumps, um, but God helped us wonderfully. And today this church is still going forward. Our hearts are so excited that after 50 years, this church is still moving forward for the Lord. This is a significant part of the journey that took us to Toronto. In the year 1980, a friend came to our home and stayed with us for a week and was having a revival at the church. And while having dinner one evening, he said to me uh, in our home, I want to tell you something. I felt it earlier, but I didn't know how to say it to you. So I said, go ahead, let me know. He said, well, I feel the Lord wants you to go to Canada. He wants you to do something there. He said to me, you may doubt it, but you'll see it will happen. To be frank, if I had to make the decision of leaving on my own, I would not have done that. I had my own house, never pay rent in my life. I, I had a good uh, ministry that was well established in the country. I was well recognized. I was accepted by the entire country. And I was on full-time ministry with a church that was taking care of me. And to leave that to go where I didn't know where I, what I was going to be doing was not an easy decision. So it was a difficult decision, but God had a plan. I went with a businessman to his store and he showed me cloth from the ceiling down to the floor. He said, I've been so blessed by your services. I want to give you enough cloth to make a three-piece suit. And he said, take your pick. I hesitated for a while and then he pulled this cloth and gave it to me and I said, well, that's fine. And he gave me a hundred dollars to pay the tailor. I immediately went to another church for another revival meeting. While at that church, I met a gentleman who is a tailor. And I told him I'd just gotten this cloth and he said, well, this is what I do for a living. If you get it to me, I'll make it for you for free. He took my measurement, I gave him the cloth, I sent the cloth to him. And a few weeks before I was coming to Canada, I heard his brother was coming down to the city. I called his brother and I said, listen, can you do me a favor? Your brother is making that suit for me. Can you please bring it for me? He said to me, Brother Joe, you're a lucky man. I said, what do you mean lucky? He said, well, the thief broke into Ronnie's tailor shop and stole everything, but left your suit. I said, well, the thief couldn't even touch that because God provided that for me. Afterward, uh, guys in the church began to laugh and they said, Pastor, the reason the thief didn't take it, it was because it was a pink suit and not even the thief wanted a pink suit. So <laughs> I, I love my pink suit and I came to Canada with it and I went to the first church I was preaching when I got to the platform, everybody was staring at me and I realized 
oh, something is not right. Uh, why are they looking at me at this? And they were all caught up with my pink suit, you know. <laughs> and I decided to put it aside and, uh, and go to a Goodwill store and bought a jacket back in 1981. <laughs> and the pink suit became a famous uh, suit in my life. But it, it represented divine provision and it represented this, the hand of God in showing you that He has ways of providing and taking care of you, even if there is human in it. This pink suit was brought into new focus when my wife and I celebrated our 50th year in ministry. Our children uh, were so uh, thoughtful. They made a replica of that pink suit and presented to me at our 50th celebration in the presence of hundreds of people. And it was really uh, a remarkable story. Well, when we came, when we came to live here in 1982, our number one goal was to fulfill God's call and purpose in our life, and that was to establish a church. But that was clouded by things that we need to get in place. We need to find a place to live. That was a challenge. We need, I needed to find a job and a proper suitable employment to support my family. And in those moments and in those times, God was amazing in the way he provided and opened doors for, for me. He provided a great job for me uh, that I worked until I, I gave it up for full-time ministry in 1995. But those years, the Lord helped us we first started in the basement of Scarborough Gospel Temple, which is now called the Global Kingdom today, uh, in November of 1983, uh, sorry, 82. And we kept about three or four services there. And then in January of 1983, January the 9th, we started our first service in Pringdale Catholic School on Danforth Avenue, 1325 Danforth Avenue. And we were there for several months. It was difficult because um, the, we had no transportation of our own. We would travel with the bus in the cold of the winter with our kids and sometime you will get there and the caretaker would not open the door until he felt that it was his time to open the door. There were moments we would stand up outside of the door at a minus 20 degree temperature for 15, 20 minutes waiting for the man to open. Then we moved from that school to the St. Rosa Lima on Lawrence Avenue. And we spent a couple of years there and God began sending people and the church started to grow. And we were having difficulties with the parking there. We, we were coming into conflict with the St. Rosa Lima church that was using the parking also. And they felt we were using up too much of the parking. So we then moved, by the goodness of the Lord, to St. Richard's Catholic School on Bellamy Avenue, 970 Bellamy Avenue. And we were there until 1998. Those were very challenging years. You had to 
carry your equipment and set it up at every service. You had to put up chairs at every service. You had to take down chairs at every service. So there was a lot of difficulties, but God gave us a lot of faithful people. Um, over those years, there are some people who made significant and worth, worthwhile contribution. We cannot forget uh, uh, Reverend Harold Binder, who was our first assistant pastor and very faithful and very supportive. There were many families that came into the church at that time and stayed with us to this very moment. Uh, Jai Singh and his family, uh, the Sigo Bin Mangal and his family. Over the year, those years, uh, Steve Jagannath and his family, the, the Tahal's family, and many other families that came into the church and made significant contribution. Uh, Reverend Gart Rowe and his wife Veronica was a part of our fellowship and was a great blessing. Uh, over those years, we have had many wonderful people that have come and serve. Uh, uh, Brother Charles Series, several others have gone on to other ministry, William Dover. There's one a member who was in the very first service in the basement of Scarborough Gospel Temple and is with us to this very day. And he is my brother-in-law, Ramrup Karam Chan. He was the first treasurer and first secretary of the church and worked tirelessly in the early days to see the church established. Over those years, we have literally ministered to thousands of people. Uh, over those years, God has really been good to us. In 1998, um, an opportunity came for us to purchase the property at 869 Progress Avenue. We negotiated with the owner of that property and we were able to secure that property. And we needed to borrow some money, so we borrowed $300,000 from the bank and uh, the Lord help us to, with the help of the people, raise another $300,000 in renovating the entire place and make it available for service. There were many people who worked tirelessly every night. There was a, a bunch of men in the church that would come every night from work. They had work clothes there and they would work until uh, midnight. M among all of those workers, one of the men that stayed with that church and that project all the time was a fellow by the name of uh, our beloved Harry Marvin who became the first custodian or caretaker of the property until he went to be with the Lord. 
but uh, we thank God for the hard working people. Um, most of the work was done by people right within the church and it brought down the cost of, of, of the renovation. Uh, we only had to pay for the electrical work, the plumbing work, and uh, some of the men who helped us in the, in the carpentry. Um, we just took care of some of them at a certain degree, but God helped us in the project. It was a, a great blessing to acquire your own place. And in about seven years, we became debt free with that property. Some of the people who made significant contribution over those years are uh, Brother Max, Samuel, Krishna Ramlakan, Mike Karu, um, the Buddha family that came and has been with us all these years, the late Michael Bates, who was a great blessing to us in those years. We've had many outstanding brethren who have gone on to glory. They've been promoted to glory that have made amazing contribution over those years. Namely, some of the names would be like Sister Saul, Sister Kelman, Sister Mosley, and many others that uh, have gone on to be with the Lord. But um, we, we have been blessed to have many others who have come and given their very best, many families that are with us. And we thank God for all of the people who are with us today in the ministry. Yeah. What the? <laughs> are you daddy? <laughs> My baby daddy. Yeah, My baby daddy. And my mommy. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> you hit my head. So my name is Jai Singh. And I'm Pam. And we started attending this church in around 1983. It was being held at Bringdale School. We were introduced to that church through my brother-in-law. And we came there, um, there were about 25 people, and we've been there ever since. Um, it was there that our son Mark was born in um, 1983 March, and we we start, he uh, you know was attending the church with us, and it was there that um, we pastor had the honor, or we had the privilege of having pastor um, dedicate Mark. So that the was first the first baby. baby being dedicated, and for us that was something very very special. Our daughter Christine was also dedicated there. Um, Gavin was older, so he was dedicated elsewhere. Um, also, I'm going to just also mention um, that the boys were also baptized by pastor in that church. Pam was, when she started going to church, she was a Hindu. What, you know what? And she started going to church, and that's where she became a Christian and accepted Christ. And she was baptized. In this church, too, well. but not in that building later on, in the following building. But um, just as a side note, um, when Gavin, before I conceived, um, I asked God to give me a son. And if he did, I would dedicate him to Jesus. At that time, I really did not know Jesus. I knew of him, but I didn't know him. And so Gavin was, you know, I had this boy, and I'm thinking, what am I going to do? Fortunately, we had a church to go to. And then I knew nothing about Christianity. I didn't know what to do. So I thought, you know what? There's a church I'm going to bring. I'm going to bring my children to church because there's something good there. And I knew that if I brought them there, they will learn something. And you know, God did not disappoint. Our sons, I'll say, are amazing. And they're very, um, you know, they're walking with God. And it was there the foundation for their faith was laid at ESP Worship Center under pastor and sister B to begin with. In 1986, our daughter Christine was born, um, a very special child, um, Down syndrome. We had no idea what Down syndrome was, so we were really devastated. 
And, um, but during that time, I'll say Sister B would call me over and over, almost every day. She prayed with me, encouraged me. And one of the things she always said, you know, that um, we don't know the reason why we have a child like that, but time will tell. Don't try to make your own judgments, but you know, God had a plan, has a plan for her life. And um, for about the first nine months, I remember how difficult it was. And Sister B will take the bus before she went to work. She will come, spend an hour with me praying, just visiting, listening to me talk. And then she would go to work. And you know, in those days it was, you know, not easy traveling. So what a sacrifice she made, you know, just coming there and, and speaking to me and also a pastor talking to me over the phone during some difficult times and preaching to me on, um, on the book of Job to encourage me. But no, definitely. And, and throughout the years, Sister B was always there in many of my diff difficult situations. Um, you know, someone I could confide in, I could talk to, and she always had a, a word of advice and prayers um, for us. So definitely. Maybe, <clears throat> maybe that's why there's such a strong connection between Christine and Sister oh. B because she's always talking about Sister B anytime we have a prayer meeting on Tuesday night. She wants to say good night to Sister Not B. Not Sister B. So. She calls her Mrs. B. Mrs. She will B. always ask. She's such a loving child. a strong child. connection between the two. Of them. She always asks Mrs. B. Pastor is Mrs. B like so. She mm -hmm. does. There's definitely a strong connection um, between the two of them. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in the Lord. I am Brother Max Samuels that has been with this ministry for the past 40 years. A ministry that I would not change for any. It has been good to me. The Lord has used this ministry to grow from strength to strength. We have moved from school to school until we were able to purchase our own building. Attended my way when sorrows like seas bellows roll. Who wanted my Lord? In the early days with the ministry, it has always been a joy. You know, um, from the first time I met Pastor, he's such a pleasant person. Um, I know he has the anointing of God upon his life. Um, the grace of God is always with him. I know he seeks the direction of the Lord um, to take this congregation wherever God wants to take us. And I can truly say we've come a long way. And um, now that we are, we are going beyond, I can safely say I know we will go beyond victoriously by the grace of God. But peace of God or the peace of God has to do with a possession that I now have in me that is causing me to live victoriously. And that's why the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, it says, Don't be anxious. Uh, that first uh, meeting, oh, you can consider the church without a name. Because we didn't, we were not uh, known as um, East Carborough Church of God at that time. We just simply met on a Saturday evening at Scarborough Gospel Temple Basement. It was not until November, sorry, January 9, 1983, that we formally uh, started to attend uh, our first service at Pringdale Catholic School on Danforth Road. And that's when we were known as East Carborough Church of God. As we moved from school to school at the early days of the ministry, um, I remember trying to get membership going and uh, get visitors going. We, a group of us, would go from apartment building to apartment building, um, putting flyers in people's doors. Um, but we had to start from the top once we got into the building because once you, they, if you were discovered by the superintendent, you would get kicked out of the building.
So we started from the top and walked our way down to the bottom. By the time we got to the bottom, if we did, if we were discovered, it would have been too late. <laughs> we would have already covered the building. That is one of the, the nicest <laughs> memories I can remember. You know, of course, there were times when, um, when Pastor got his first card. Um, most of us didn't have cars in those days. We came on the bus, and Pastor was always willing to help out. Dozen and a half people who were with us are still with us today, and we thank God for that. I, I want to honor those people. I want all those folk who were here in the congregation at Pringdale in the first couple of months. I'm going to ask you to stand up. Would you stand? I know some of you are there, those who are there at Pringdale. Would you stand and see them, Brother Basil and your guide? So, initially, I will consider myself the very first secretary treasurer of the church and the very first young adult Bible uh, study teacher, Sunday school teacher. And um, it was very rewarding, especially in the Sunday school area, because I've seen souls uh, grow in the knowledge of the Word of God. I remember when we started our Sunday school, I was the first teacher in the Sunday school. When it grew, I became the first superintendent. When we started our men's fellowship group, I was the first men's fellowship leader. Um, I was one of the first deacons in the church and one of the longest running deacons. Um, and I enjoyed every moment of it. I enjoy being with this ministry and again, would not look to any other ministry to go to. I have been here 40 years and I, I look forward to being here, maybe for the next 40 years. I've been singing in this ministry for 40 years as well. I've sang to three generations, like I said. I've sang to Pastor, I've sang to his son, Pastor Donnie, and now I'm singing to Pastor Donnie's son. And hopefully I'll be around to sing to Pastor Donnie's son, son. Who knows if God would keep me that long. I am privileged and honored to be a part of this ministry and will continue to as long as God would have me to be. In Jesus' name. Donnie and his sister Diane was in the first service. And um, when Donnie preached his first sermon, I was in the church and I could not believe the, the sermon that he preached, uh, the, 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 the depth. Uh, I remember the name of the sermon. It was Armed and Dangerous, Armed and Dangerous, referring to the sword, the Word of God. And um, I said to myself that, you know what? He is going to go places and he needs encouragement. And as Donnie said, he reminded me, I don't remember this, is that I went to his home and I gave him encouragement. And I thank God that I was part of his ministry and part of his life. So this is our baby girl, Christine, 36 years old. And this is a miracle child. Um, with the amount of surgery she's had, open heart surgeries, prayers that had to be offered. and. Even the doctors had to say she is a miracle that she's alive today. So yes, um, the pastors, especially Sister B, is a very big part of Christine's life. Right, Christine? So you want to say something? Okay. I love Pastor. Thank you, everybody. Come in. And they did bother me to be. They all come in bring life. They all were here. Say love. They all were here. Me. Down here, I'm alone. I'm not one on my bird. I know that y'all come and say, I need light. Thank I love you. That did put me to be a light. I like you, dear Lord. I, like the the Lord. I can be only amazed 
because when you look back and I'm thinking is that I was not only uh, building, belonging to a building or to a structure, you contributed to it. It's you, you consider yourself a part. You are building into something greater than yourself. And when you can think, when you think that you're contributing to a movement or a career or a vocation that is bigger than you, and you have seen the fruits of it after 40 years, you can say that it's quite an accomplishment. And um, I will not give any credit solely to the individual, but because you put your faith and trust in God, that, that He is going to build His church, and the gates of hell will not prevail, you rest assured that you could not lose. Right? The other one is attending a church like this, where some doctrine, Mercy biblical doctrine, says, but is you being preached. Were wash. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of Jesus and by the Spirit of God. It don't matter what your past was. It don't matter how dirty it was. It don't matter how dark it was. It don't matter how soiled it was. When God, when you trust Jesus, you are justified, meaning declare righteous before God. Come on, somebody. I am Krishna Ramnakan, yeah. and people know me as the chairman of ESP. This is 1983. I was known as the chairman from 1983 to 1998 when he moved to the city, when he moved in here, right? Everybody knew me as the chairman. I can remember vividly the first anniversary. We had a limited chair, had limited chair accommodation. So whatever chair we had in the gym, we used to put it out, and then we got to climb all the stairs, bring down the chairs from the two flights of stairs, bring it down, set up for the anniversary. After anniversary, you have to take back the chairs up the stairs, put it back in the visual class, classroom, how we get it. And I did it with great pleasure, what I did. I know I did it for the Lord. I didn't did it to get praise. I did it as to the Lord, you know. And I was, I was so I privileged to be here these 40 years, and I am. Um, there's not one time these 40 years I, I make no attempt to leave this church. From the day I came here, I was anchored here, and I never moved. I never went to other, no other church beside this one. I serve here, I worship here, I, I, I support the work of the Lord, and I got pleasure doing that, and I will continue doing that. I know the, I know the Lord is not finishing me yet, and I will continue to do as long as I'm alive. I continue to work, serve the church and um, whatever, for, for what area I will do. Not here, but what you have done for the Lord's service. Amen. This is only a small token, and it is an ESP Worship Center Lifetime Service Award to present it to Brother Krishna Ramlakan in recognition of your commitment and outstanding service since 1983. Let's put our hands together one more time for this. And we appreciate him very much. And this is just, as I say, a small token of the love that this whole church has for you, what you have done to bless this house. We are forever grateful. This is the very first lifetime service award we've given to anybody for 40 years of service. Amen? Amen. Pastor is a man with a shepherd's heart, like that is. He's, he's, he's really a man of God. I, I respect and honor all the rest of my life. I can't find myself without Pastor. I'm lost without him. You know, and I keep, I look up to him. I might be tell us, I won't tell him, but I know what. I love him, I pray every single day. I will pray 
but this pastoral thing, you know. Reach him in the air in my father's house. My Jesus will be there. You will see him as he is with a print of the nail in his hand. Jesus, James, and John. Many, many years, but he's been practicing. So we're going to encourage him, right? Yeah. We're going to encourage him. All right. Are you ready? You, you, let me know. You need some water or anything? You okay? Are you okay? You ready? Come on, give him a hand again. We got to encourage your pastor tonight. He's doing this because he loves this church, he loves you, and he wants to see many people come out to the camp. So this is your pastor, the mighty James. Prasad. Uh, I am the youngest child of Pastor Joel and Sister B. I'm born and raised uh, in this church. I don't exactly remember what year I was in terms of 40, but I'm 34, so you guys do the math. Um, you know, it's it's so interesting to see, like when I think about where this church came from and really what I was seeing growing up, you know, um, I can vaguely remember bits of um, St. Rose, but a lot of the things I remember are from St. Richard's. And, you know, you still get to church early on Sunday mornings to set up uh, drums, instruments, um, set up chairs, um, tear down every Sunday, you know, just growing up in the church, I'm a musician too. And from a musical perspective, you know, we've come a real long way. The proof is in the pudding. I'm sitting here on stage and we have all these beautiful instruments around us. I can remember when we first got into this building, um, we had all the red chairs for this building. The carpet wasn't laid down yet. And even transitioning from St. Richard's into this building, um, we used to have to pack up the chairs every night after every Sunday evening service. That's why it's, I said every night. And, um, and eventually, you know, when the carpet actually got laid out, I can remember the Sunday where service was done and dad on the pulpit said, doesn't it feel good? We don't have to pack anything up. 
And I just thought to myself, man, that's, it feels so weird to say that because that's what we were so accustomed to. So we take little things like that for granted now, you know, but that just shows the evolution of what we've come from and how far we've come. Um, a lot of churches don't reach this milestone. Uh, a lot of people don't reach a 40th anniversary of anything. Um, so to even just have a church as a body of believers come 40 years, that is a huge testament to the dedication, devotion, and the sacrifice of not only the pastors um, and the families of the pastors of the church, but also everyone who has volunteered and put their hands to the plow over the 40 years. Um, everything that has been built is seen here today and what you guys come into the sanctuary now and see how everything is so nice and beautiful and what is evolved into that stands on the shoulders of the foundation that everyone has laid in the past 40 years. Hi, my name is Diane Persaud and I am the only daughter and favorite child of pastors Joe Persaud and Sister B Persaud. I am truly privileged and honored to have been here to serve with my parents and my family for the last 40 years. 40 years is a huge milestone, not just for our ESP church, but for our family. God has been so good to us, and I truly believe that everything we, we ESP have done, we have committed it to Him. You know, I have served with my parents over these last 40 years. It has been such a great honor to be able to serve the people of God. You know, my father is known as being the pastor with a servant's heart. It is a quality that embodies who he truly is and defines him as a leader. And this is a principle that he has established and taught each of his family members, his children, his grandchildren, to be our legacy, our lineage, to serve the people of this church and in our communities. And this is something that we don't take lightly. Every single one of us has been honored or feels honored to have been given the opportunity to serve alongside all of the ESP members. We know that there have been difficult moments and there have been trials and struggles, but through it all, God has been faithful. We've looked to Him, we've sought His face, and He has always come through for us. It is our family lineage to be able to serve others. And that has been very clearly demonstrated in my mother's passion for missions and her ability to travel through nations to be able to share the gospel. I'm grateful and just super proud of my parents and what they've been able to accomplish over these 40 years through the help of the Holy Spirit and a great team of people who have contributed decade after decade. When I think about my parents' courage, their compassion, and their commitment to what God has called them to do, it is a great example for all of us in ministry and just in life in general. They serve with everything they have. I can remember one December, we woke up on a Sunday morning and we had a significant amount of snow. It was probably two feet of snow that fell that night. The roads were not cleared, but of course my father said, we're going to church. So we started shoving the driveway, we made a path, and as we were going, we only made it a few feet out of the driveway and just got stuck in the circle which we lived in. The snow was way too high. And I thought that was it. We weren't going to church that day, but man, was I wrong. My father said, I'm going to church. I need to be there, I'm the pastor. So you know what he did? He left the car in the middle of the circle for myself and my cousin, Stephen Paul, to figure out how to get it back in the driveway. And he decided that he was going to walk to church in the snow. And he left us and he walked to church. I said, why are you going? He goes, if people show up, I have to be there. And he walked, maybe it took him an hour, an hour and a half in two feet of snow. He got to church. He shoveled a little bit. In the end, probably four or five people showed up. But, you know, it was so important. I learned the lesson that day. When you serve, you serve with everything. And that would, that's what he did. He walked through all that snow. That's how my parents both serve. 
and give of their best because whatever we do, we do it unto God. Our church have been blessed with great ministries. My wife, Sister B, it was instrumental in initiating and starting up many of the early ministries. She is responsible for the starting of the Sunday school ministry, the ladies ministry, the seniors ministry, the intercessory prayer ministry. In some ways, she was the first guitarist in the church and was in, uh, instrumental in helping to start the first set of musical uh, arm of the church. Uh, we've been blessed to have great people. Um, Sister B, after starting the the senior ministry, Sister Prasad took over that and did a great job. Sister Juliet Prasad did a great job with the senior ministry until Sister Pam today is leading that ministry in a great way. Sister Sandy Panado has taken over the the ladies ministry and has been the longest serving leader for that department and is doing an amazing job. Our Sunday school department was led by various people over the years, but Brother Derek and Barbara Prasad uh, has been outstanding uh, along those areas. Brother Sigobin Mangal came in the church and became um, the secretary treasurer of the church after Brother Ram Rupan served in that capacity for uh, many years on the church board. Thank God for him. We, we have seen many other ministries raise up in the church. Um, Brother Robert Brooks uh, came in and we de he, de he developed mainly the care and share ministry, a pantry that is always filled with grocery for those who are needy along with a team of ladies such as Sister Pam, Sister Sandy, and several others. They work with Brother Brooks in, in providing uh, hampers for many, many people uh, every month. And, and there are uh, ushers ministry that uh, our Brother James Panada at one time led it but now Sister uh, Debbie Samuels is doing a, a great job along with many other people. They're great workers in the, in the ministry of ushering. And, uh, you know, we thank God for, for, the, for these ministries. We have had um, a great a mission program. We have had many people serve in, in the local mission area. Uh, William Dover at one time, but Brother Suresh served in that area. And we have been involved in many foreign missionaries work. We have involved, been involved in missionary work in India, in Africa, in just about everywhere in the Caribbean. Over these years we have helped to build churches. We have helped to build churches in Haiti, in India, in Guyana, in Africa. We, we have personally involved ourselves with with about 12 different churches in Guyana and we have helped in so many ministries around the world. We have come this far by faith leaning on All right, my name is Brian Clark, and um, April 18th, I arrived in Canada from Guyana. Um, April 18th, 1988, actually, and I attended East Scarborough Pentecostal Church on April the 20th, um, which was the Sunday following the Friday, 1988. Um, and I vividly remember when I walked into the church, um, Sister B, which is pastor's wife, was playing the, the rhythm guitar. 
And from my experience back in Guyana and, and being involved in music, um, I played guitar and I was, was also singing at that time. And um, I remember the first Sunday I walked into the, into the church, they were meeting at St. Rose of Lima School. Um, it was a Catholic school we met in the auditorium of the school. And um, first day I walked in, uh, Sister B called me up and handed me the guitar. And I would say from that day to today, um, which is that almost 34 years later, I am still heavily involved in the music ministry of this church. And I am blessed and excited to see where we have grown and how we have come 40 years later, where we are today. But super excited to be, to be able to continue to be involved in the music ministry of the ESP Worship Center. Over the years, we were able to develop and to grow as the church grew. Um, moving from St. Rose of Lima into St. Richard's, we developed a choir. We started a choir that um, we used to meet at pastor's basement uh, back in the days for practice. Um, we started working on not only the choir, but we started working on, on developing musicians. We had some great musicians that passed through during the last 30 some years that I've been I have been involved in music ministry. Um, you know, I, and I'm scared to call names because then I miss somebody. But we had some real good musicians and singers over the years. And then we, when we moved into the building, into this building that we're in, um, we were able to, we were able to start what we call a worship team with, you know, worship leaders. Um, and we had some, again, some talented, talented musicians that came in during that period that really, really supported and took us to another level at that point. Um, the choir got better, the, 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 the worship experience at ESP got better. Everybody who were, who were involved at that time really improved themselves and really started presenting, you know, great worship, great music. Um, you know, in the end, you know, there are a couple of people that, you know, would come to mind in terms of we have Brother James who's still here playing the keyboard for us, um, Brother Derek, you know, who has passed away a number of years ago, but he was instrumental in the drums and really driving what, you know, we, what we were doing. Um, we had some great people. And as I said, I'm scared to call names because then it's gonna become a problem because I might just forget some people. But we had some great people who were involved um, and who provided real stability and, 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 and help over those years, you know, in the end, I mean, as we as we approach, we are now, you know, the ESP Praise came out and we did our, we, we did one CD, one song with ESP Praise. Um, I think that was a couple of years ago. But, you know, I go back to things like, you know, um, uh, Jesus in the City, where we participated from a music standpoint, all of those things, concerts that we have, cantata that we had, all of those things. Those were really, really exciting times um, in terms of what we were doing and how the music ministry grew and touched so many lives um, and changed so many people over the years that, you know, to God be the glory in that. Great is thy faithfulness Oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. You know, looking back, this church, ESP Worship Center, um, not only from my involvement, but ESP Worship Center has really made a tremendous impact on my life, the life of my wife, the life of my children. Um, and I value, value where we started. And, you know, super excited today to see where God has brought us. You know, 40 years is a very long time um, to be, and to continue to be relevant, even in today's society, in today's time is so important. And this church continue to be relevant. Um, and doing things for the glory of God. On top of that, I am, I am more, I am even more excited that I can, I'm still able to contribute. You know, the, the respect, the value that has been placed in what I have been able to do and 
What Sandra been able to do working alongside me, um, that is beyond that is beyond gratitude in terms of and still being able to be part of what's happening um, and still being valued. Um, from a contribution standpoint, I think that's that's even greater. Um, I know of many people who have who have passed and who have gone on, but you know to still be here and to be valued and to be you know continue to be relevant that excites me. Um, looking forward to greater things, you know, maybe the next 40 years. Who knows? I'm looking forward to greater things as God will continue to do what He promised, even in even in this season, what He promised to do. I am Pastor George Bassad. I'm happy to be part of ESP ministry myself and my wife, Sister Bassad. We have been involved in the ministry for many years. We find it a pleasure working with Pastor Joe and Sister B. They are wonderful people. The church is doing great. And um, my wife has been in charge of the ladies, the seniors ministry for many years. I have been assistant pastor to the church for many years. And it was a joy and privilege being called into the ministry and serving the Lord. I was in charge of the um, converts class. I work in that area. Um, I taught Sunday school for a while and a lot of ministry, you know, I was involved in for a while. Um, the years were short, but um, because I'm, I'm a senior I'm 81 year now, and um, you can imagine I slow down a lot, but thank God for the grace and strength. I can still reach out to people. I still reach out in telephone calls. When anybody's sick, I reach out to them, and I'm involved in quite a lot of number of work. My son-in-law is a wonderful pastor, wonderful man of God, and my daughter is very involved. They're doing a great job. And they write books too. So. My hiding place, my safe refuge, my treasure, Lord, you are my friend and king, anointed one. Lord. Hi, I'm Pastor Donnie. And I'm Christina. It's an absolute privilege for us to serve the Lord and to serve God's people here at ESP and ultimately to serve purpose in our generation. We've been super blessed over the last 20 plus years to lead various areas of the ministry at ESP. Serving is not without its challenges and its moments of discouragement, but with God's help, we're able to move forward and be strengthened daily. A few years ago, we were privileged to visit the Holy Land with our ESB family. And my dearest husband here bought me something very special, which I hold very dear to my heart. It serves as a reminder of how we are to serve um, as children of God. So it's a widow's mite pendant and it's very special to me. In Mark 12, it talks about the woman who gave her all. Everyone else was giving out of the abundance of what they had. But for this widow, she gave everything. And it reminds us how we should serve with our everything, our absolute best. It's really how we've seen our parents serve in ministry. And it's how we aim with the help of God to serve, to lay it all out, to give God our absolute best every day, all the time for his glory. That's it, we give all the time of our best. We are grateful for what God has done. We are faithful for what he is doing. And we are hopeful for the future.
Let's go! We've had great kids programming at ESP. We've been privileged to have Brother Derek, Sister Barbara, and their family run our Sunday school department for a number of years. Also, we've had Brother Sego, Sister Lynette, and their family facilitate our VBS programs faithfully for quite a number of years and have also done a wonderful job. See, although the message does not change, the methods with which we present the message does change and we're grateful for new technology new tools that we can use to engage the students in learning and with God's help we continue the work and we have been privileged in the past and in the present to have an amazing team of teachers who are no doubt committed they are passionate they are skilled and they are no doubt called to the ministry of teaching To see the kids worshiping and praising God and being excited, it just gets me motivated. It just lights a fire in me. I'm just so passionate about teaching. I came to teach at the age of 13 and it's always been something that's been so dear to my heart for many, many years. So to see them engage in learning about the Word of God, it is simply fulfilling. It was 2011 when God birthed the vision for the Kids for Christ ministry. From the very start, we've had an excellent team who loved God, loved to serve, and loved kids. The intent of it was simply just to add on to the excellent kids program we already had going on. Kids would be so excited to come to K4C and there'd be quite a few tears when it was time to leave. Um, it's been an amazing ride. It's just wonderful to see the kids grow in God. It's a place, Kids for Christ is a place where the kids can come and they can learn about God in an exciting and engaging way. They can discover and develop their giftings and also a place where they can form meaningful friendships with other kids their own age. Todd was successfully passed to Sister Lizanne, who has accepted graciously the position of leadership in the Kids for Christ ministry. Herself and a wonderful team of leaders are now carrying on the vision and they're doing an amazing job. Shine for Jesus is a creative arts development program that started in 2010. It is an opportunity for kids to discover and develop the amazing gifts God has placed within each of them. Through this platform, we provide guidance, coaching for the kids, and they're able to competently develop their gifts and use them for God's glory. We've had the opportunity to witness the blooming and blossoming of many Shine for Jesus alumni who now serve at ESP as musicians, worship team leaders, media team members, and dancers. God has been good and he has been using this program in way beyond our own expectations. A parent came to me and she said, I see you, I see your plan you're intentional. I looked at her and I smiled because she had seen the vision. She saw that we were preparing the next generation with their gifts to go out and take territory. She saw that we're preparing them to go further than we can ever go. This program is not only a blessing to the kids and allows them to develop, but it also provides opportunity for many coaches and many others to get involved in service. I think it's just what God has designed me to do and what his purpose is for my life. So honestly, when I'm doing all that I'm doing, it's just with him in mind, with his purpose for my life in mind. And honestly, it's just really, really fulfilling uh, to be doing what you've been placed on the earth to do, to help others, to inspire, to encourage, to mentor, to shape the next generation. It's simply what I've been called to do.
Since the very beginning, we've always had a very strong youth ministry at the church. In the earlier days, we had a few different people helping, but most notably Brother Andrew Prasad, who led the ministry from 1990 to 2000. Brother Andrew was very committed and very compassionate. He loved the young people and he did a great job. Uh, in those days, we were called Christ Ambassadors or CAs. And we did things like Christmas caroling, which everybody loved, and the annual Canada's Wonderland trip. We continued that for decades back then. Now, I remember Brother Andrew coming to me and said, hey, I want you to join the youth committee. And I said, no. <laughs> he came and asked me a second time, and I said, no. He asked me a third time, can you, I said, no. He kept asking, and finally I said, yes. And that really became the foundation for me to get involved in the youth ministry. My wife actually served as well on the committee, so we've been working together in ministry for a very long time. In 2000, I was elected as the youth leader. No, that is not what I wanted. I told God, I said, Lord, you know I didn't want this, and if this is something you want me to do, you have to help me. You know, God had a plan, and he helped me from the very beginning, and those years shaped me to become the man of God I am today. In those days, we came up with a name or had a competition to name the youth ministry, and everybody selected the name Fusion Youth Ministries. I never liked Fusion <laughs> from the beginning. That was the name my wife put forward. I thought the name I had was better, but in the end, Fusion was the right name. And it was just such a privilege to serve the young people for so many years. My wife and I have led the ministry, uh, led the ministry for about 15 years directly. And to see the young people grow up, uh, some have gone on to get married and have children, and hear them come and tell us how they were so impacted in, by what we did in the team in those days. It means so much to us to see them using their gifts, serving God, and knowing that we've had an, uh, an impact on their life. Now, we were just, you know, we had some great programs over the years, raised the praise, uh, waged the war, spread the blaze, sent to represent, great, great programs to develop young people, and in particular, Favor Flavor, which was a uh, concert and barbecue that we did at the end or the beginning of the summer, very well attended. We just love young people. That's our heart. That's always been our passion. And, you know, we had a great team that served alongside of us for those years. Uh, Brother Samuel Prasad was one who's been with us ride or die from the beginning, uh, from serving on the committee with Brother Andrew to leading with us for all those years. And now today, him and his wife, Sister Tessa, they lead our young adult ministry. Ryan Jagernaut was one of those key contributors who have been a part of the team for many years. And after we led for about 15 years, Brother Ronaldo was uh, appointed as a youth leader and him and his wife, Sister Marissa, led the ministry uh, for about five or six years and we appreciate their contribution and, and how they served. Today the youth ministry is led by brother Joel Boudou, JB as everybody calls him. He's well loved and the young people really uh, appreciate his leadership. He's doing a great job and I have to shout out uh, sister Elizabeth Chapman and sister Esther Booth. They've been serving even from when we were leaders now we still oversee it and they're still serving today. So we thank you so much, uh, my wife and I, for your contribution. You are making a difference in the lives of young people. Listen, we're Fusion for a reason, Future Generation Youth Ministries. If it had not been for the years that we served in youth ministry, I don't know who I would be today. It has shaped the very core of the person I am, the man of God I am, both my wife and myself. We are who we are today because of the years serving young people. So yo, you know we love the young people, always, forever in our heart. One of the most unique things we do as a ministry is called Taste and See. It is a cultural festival where we celebrate culture, diversity, and it is a platform to showcase the, the various nationalities that make up ESP Worship Center. We are about 25 different nations. And this got started first in about 2005 
we had an international uh, potluck where everybody would bring food from their country. Man, it was good. And over the years, it just became too big for us to host inside the church. So we took it outdoor, created a festival. Taste and See has now become a marquee event around the city. Everybody looks forward to it. And we're gonna bring it in full force again next year. But it is so impactful for me and our leaders to see people in the Parade of Nations holding their flag, marching to the national anthem, the sense of pride they have. And it's, it's so important because God has uniquely made each of us and we need to celebrate who he's created us to be. So we really love this event. My father would always say, we don't tolerate diversity. We celebrate diversity. That's the God we serve. So taste and see from the, the kids' fun zone to the concert, to every aspect of that uh, particular event. It is the largest outreach event we have as a church. Uh, there are thousands of people that have come and been part of this. We've poured back into the community, and it is really a, 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 an opportunity for us to serve and at the same time celebrate diversity, celebrate the entire ESP family. We've got people from all over the world and we love every single one of them. ESP, we are uh, 25 plus nations strong. Taste and See is an incredible event. In 2020, the Lord gave us a word to guide us forward, a single word, beyond. And that literally has transformed our ministry. In 2020, the theme was seeing beyond. In 21, it was going beyond. And in 2022, it was living beyond. December 5th, 2021 is a Sunday that I will never forget. We as a church will never forget. It was going beyond Sunday. And on that Sunday, we announced Project Beyond. I have never seen the church so excited from the youngest to the oldest. Uh, we were so united around this cause of taking the ministry forward and with Project Beyond. And it has been a complete transformation. Uh, Project Beyond is a renovation project of the entire church. We've rebuilt the sanctuary, all the areas of the church, the outside. In 1998, I was privileged to be involved in the original building of the church. I was there every day, just helping generally with the, the skilled team, passing tools, cleaning up, whatever they like and do. But in the rebuild that we just completed in 22, you know, I, I, I'm grateful that God allowed me to lead that project with such a great team. But you know, after we announced Project Beyond on December the 5th, a couple days later, I woke up with a very simple thought. The thought was, God will provide. And I walked around my house, I began proclaiming that God will provide, God will provide. And it's got me very excited. And I made a promise to the Lord. I said, God, every single day of this project, that, that we have this project beyond, I want the words, the first words out of my mouth every day to be, God will provide. And you know, that night uh, I, I programmed my thoughts and I woke up the next day and I said, God will provide. And you know, for that entire two plus months of this project, it was the first words out of my mouth. Only two days I missed it. It was after, but it's not the religiosity, it's the intent of the heart. And that became the mantra for everyone on the team. God will provide. We had challenges, yes. There were obstacles, there were things to overcome, but God will provide. That's the way we looked at it. I remember I got a phone call from one of the contractors and he said, you know, it's going to cost you this much more, $30,000 more than we were bargaining for or expecting. I hung up the phone and the first words out of my mouth was God will provide. That Sunday, we went to the church and we told them what has happened and we said, you know, this thing is costing us $30,000 more, but we want you to pray and believe by next Sunday, we are going to tell you and declare that God has provided and we saved that $30,000, we're not going to pay an extra $30,000. I went to bed that night. The next morning I woke up. I said, God, wouldn't it be amazing if we could tell the church we saved $30,000, but we also received a $30,000 seed in, in giving. And I got excited and I began to rehearse how I would tell the church that we received a double blessing, that we saved $30,000 and we also received a $30,000 seed. On Thursday, 
I was planning of that week to call a couple of people who I knew could potentially give that kind of money. I wasn't going to ask them for the money, just tell them about the project. And Thursday came around, I got so busy, I, f I didn't get a chance to call. But do you know, Thursday night, I got a phone call and somebody said, Pastor Donnie, I want to give $30,000 to Project Beyond. I said, are you kidding? My wife and I took the call, I said, are you sure? That's a lot of money. The person said, yes, God said to give it. And I was just blown away. Here I am thinking that, you know, I could make a phone call and maybe get some money. Who am I to think that I can help God? God taught me a lesson and it is absolutely incredible. God did provide. Not only did we save $30,000 because we, we got, the contra, uh, got the job done cheaper, but we got a $30,000 seed. Look at God. And on that Sunday, we announced it just as we, just that I was rehearsing, I was able to share with the church that God has blessed us. And I will, let me add this to encourage you. The, the, the $30,000 seed was for a home, but it was given to build God's house. And in that same year, God multiplied that seed. And now that home actually has become two properties. God bless the giver. I want to encourage you today. Listen, God will provide whatever you are doing. My faith has been challenged and strengthened because of this. And it is something that I will always treasure and remember. He is a God that provides. Jehovah Jireh. God will provide. We're so grateful for the team that made Project Beyond possible. You never go as far as your dream. You go as far as your team. So let me say thank you to Brother Dale Prasad, Brother Chris Gomes, Brother Bruce Prasad, Brother Joel Brudu, Brother Jai Singh, Brother Royston, Brother Robert Brooks, uh, Francis Tovey, Brother Seymour, and so many others who made this a great success. And Pastor Joe, we could not have done this without each of you. And there are many more names that I didn't mention. We appreciate everyone, Gordon, all those who contributed to make this a success. It's never an individual thing. It is a team rallying around a purpose to build for the future. So we're so grateful. I wanna take the opportunity to also thank my family, my wife. It wasn't easy over those couple of months for my family, my, my wife and my boys. So thank you so much for your love and support. Always you guys are there. And, um, you know, together we have done something that I believe the Lord has looked down upon and he is smiling. We have positioned ourselves for a greater blessing and for greater effectiveness in the kingdom of God. With all the new technology, our media team is doing an incredible job with the lighting, the sound, and everything else that goes into making our services what it is today. So thank you to the entire media team. You all are doing such a great job. Keep up the good work. To this house, we are now standing in the doorway of impartation. We have built what God set to build. We're still going, but we are standing in the doorway of a spiritual harvest. It is for fruit, and we are about to see a harvest of souls like we have never seen. My name is Julian Gomes. Well, my first experience was very good. I received a warm welcome coming into the area, into the fellowship. Uh, my first time at church, I met a few bad brethren there and it's like everything fell into place. Before that, I was praying earnestly that God would lead me to a church, a real Bible-based church, a church whereby I can excel in the things of God, where I can be of, of a good, of great use in the kingdom of God and come into this place at first, I knew for a fact that this is where God had wanted me to be. And it's such a great pleasure to be in the house of God here, in the work of the Lord, knowing that we have a, 
mighty man of God who brings God's word every day, every Sunday, and somebody who is word-based, and I thank God for that, because what will keep us in this time is the word of God. Praise the Lord. Well, being a part of this ministry has uh, taught me a great deal. You know, coming here is a bit different from back home. Back home gave me a great, a strong foundation. But coming here and being open to the things, to what God is doing, sometimes you don't think, well, you can make an impact where you go. But I thank God for the foundation that He has laid within me. And, uh, you know, many were encouraged, you know, through my prayer and my, you know, my intercession and doing the work of the Lord here. And from time to time, you know, many will come and they will tell you, you know, they will pat you on your shoulder or your back and say, great job, keep up the good work that you're doing. God is truly with you. And being involved with the team here and with the brethren here, it's such, you know, a great fit for me. And I want to thank God that he has placed me here so that I can be involved in what he is doing in the work here. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I would like to thank God that coming here, I was able as a pastor to be a part of the pastoral staff here. And, uh, you know, my wife also, she's involved in the media team and she it was a great fit for her and to see her being used by God to continue what she was doing, you know, back home. And I thank God for where he has placed us. I know that he has great things for us to do. He hasn't finished with us as yet, and I know that we will continue to avail ourselves to God's work. I thank God that when I came here, I was involved in the men's ministry, and that was very, you know, I learned so much from the men's ministry and so on, and I'm embarking on the new ministry of the of being involved in the altar work, you know, and I think that God is calling me so that I can be a very instrumental part in what he's doing in the next phase of this ministry. I know that we're entering into 40 years of ministry and, uh, you know, 40 is a very significant number in the Bible. It speaks of us going through a trying time, a testing time, and, you know, some hardship, but through it all, God was with us and we stuck in there. And, uh, you know, after, the, after 40 years, I think God is getting ready to do something new. And uh, even this morning when I was worshiping, you know, it's like God was saying to me, look, I'm about to do something new in this church. I'm about to do something new. This church will be filled this year to capacity and we will have to embark on so many different areas of ministry. And I want to thank God for what he was showing me this morning. And I believe that God, you know, will use us as a team to move his work forward. God has great things for us in store and the team that we have embarked upon this year, you know, that um, new, the new is now is very significant because after 40 years, we can expect God to bring us and to, to expand, expand us and to use us in great ways so that we can be involved in what he is doing. I know he's doing something great this year. And I'm so proud, I'm proud to be involved in what he's doing. Praise the Lord. One of the most sentimental moments in Project Beyond was when we took down the cross that has hung on the back, of our, on the back wall of our stage for over 20 years. Well, praise God, today is a historic day. After 22 years of serving this platform, we're about to make a major change. Behind me is a cross that symbolizes our faith. This was done by our late brother, Harry Marvin. We feel so moved in our heart to have to move this cross, but we will relocate it again 
But I want you to know that God has been good and we are just trusting the Lord for great and mighty things. This is an expansion in God's kingdom and God's work and for the honor and glory of the Lord. Our purpose is to touch and transform lives for the glory of God. It is significant that today, after 22 years, I'm going to be removing this cross that I laid by the Harry Morpin, who is with Jesus today in eternity. Lord, just pull the curtain and let him see what we're doing in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. It was sentimental because that cross was built by our dear brother Harry Mervyn. Uh, he put his time and energy to craft that and uh, it's so special. It's been there for all this time. Brother Harry was our custodian who did a great job. When we took that cross down, we knew that we wanted to find the right place to relocate the cross. And we did. We're thankful for that because as we were building for the future, we wanted to preserve our past. And today that cross now hangs at the entrance of our sanctuary. What we've done to it is simply light it up a little bit, but it is the same cross. And there we have the future and the past together. And we're just grateful that it's still there. And that is a symbol. The cross, of course, is a symbol of our faith. And it, is a, and it symbolizes who we are as a church. And we're grateful that it's still there. So thank you, Brother Harry, you know, for building that for us. And it's going to remain here for generations to come. It was a spiritually significant moment for us when we had the stage signing and all of the members of the church and the visitors or followers had an opportunity to sign their scripture verse on the stage before it was covered with its final material. While we were signing the stage with the word, we had a prayer meeting going on. It was a powerful moment. It symbolizes that this church was built on the word and on prayer. And God spoke and he ministered powerfully we are a church of the word. We will always be a church built on the word and a church built on prayer. My wife and I are just grateful to be a part of the story of ESP. 40 years is a significant milestone, a spiritually significant accomplishment. We are grateful and thankful that we can just be a part of what God is doing. The Lord has authored everything for ESP that has happened in the past and everything that is to come and we're excited about the future and just humbled that we can just be a part of the story, a part of the lives of the people. We thank you so much, every member, every follower, every leader, every pastor. You are so important. Together, we are going forward and we're gonna take territory for the glory of God. We are going to shine and we are gonna shine bright at ESP Worship Center. So praise arise. This is 40 years, and we say thank you. This is 40 years. There have been some good days. There have been some bad days. There have been some ups, and there have been some downs. But one thing remains. God is forever faithful. He is forever faithful. He is a forever faithful. Come on, somebody shout it. Pastor Joe, Pastor B, we want to thank you for 40 years of great messages, 40 years of prayers, 40 years of encouragement, 40 years of astute leadership, of wisdom, of vision, of care for the family here at ESP. We want to thank you for your faithful service, but most of all, we want to thank you for your continued dedication to transforming and touching lives for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To me, great is your faithfulness to me from the rising sun to the setting sea.
We are ESP. We are Multicultural Church. Everyone is welcome. Everyone is valued here. We are ESP. We are a multi-generational church. From the youngest to the oldest, there is a place for you here. We are ESP. We're a multi-dimensional church. We do many things, all for God's glory. has a plan. He has a plan for ESP and he has a plan for you. Jeremiah 1.12 declares, God watches over his word to perform it. That means God is forever faithful to his word. So we must be forever faithful to him and his plan. God has the plan. New is now. New.